The properties of metals and nonmetals help us to use and identify materials for our specific needs. For example, luster. If we look at the metals on the left, they're all pretty shiny, which means that they have a very smooth surface. All these non-metals on the right are not very shiny, they're dull except glass. And so things that are lustrous are very useful to us because they're smooth so they can be sanitized easily. Magnetism is another thing that we typically think about when we think of metals. And as you see here, this metal sign is, ma is magnetic, but my dog is not. These bricks, not responding to a magnet, but the fireplace is. This bone isn't, neither is the glass, but the metal door does. And both of these exterior building materials do not. Neither does a plastic slide. And the dishwasher, which is metal, and the soda can don't either. So while we typically think of metals being magnetic, just a few actually are, and non-metals pretty much never are. Electrical conductivity is another thing that is very useful to us. And it's a stream of electrons that runs through something. But non-metals do not conduct electricity. Um, metals, on the other hand, do allow electrons to pass through them. And so when we're looking at making wires, we want the wires to be metal, like this copper, but the outside of the metals need to be non-metals so that they insulate and do not let the electricity pass through to the people or substances on the other side. So the inside of the wire, metal, and the outside is that insulator. So that is one way, right, that we use metals and non-metals in electricity. Metals are also ductile, which allow us to make wires with them, and they're malleable, which lets us pound them into sheets so that we can use them for like building applications. Two more properties that are very indicative of metals. Um, thermal conductivity is another thing where we have times that we want heat to pass through a substance and times that we do not. So like a pot holder is an insulator made of non-metals that keeps our hand from getting burned, while this metal pan and the glass below allow the heat to transfer through into the food. Typically, metals have a higher thermal conductivity and non-metals are lower. They're considered insulators. Another important heat-related property is the melting point. We can see when we put metals and non-metals in the oven that the metals on the left get a lot softer and squishier when they're applied to heat. There's one metal on the right, gallium, that melts at a very low temperature, but these non-metals would not be very good to use in something that's a high heat application, whereas these metals all stayed solid. So in general, metals are better for high heat scenarios. Density is another one, right? Whether things will float and sink, how heavy they are per volume. So metals tend to be very dense and non-metals tend to not be very dense. So depending on whether you need something heavy or light, you would look at that property and choose a metal or a non-metal. Hardness of the surface is something that we can look at. We can see here pottery is pretty hard, but this styrofoam definitely isn't. This metal has a very high hardness. This plastic can be dinged up. This copper has a pretty scratchable surface as well, but this glass is pretty hard and can't be scratched up very easily. So typically we consider metals to have a higher surface hardness and non-metals to be lower. As far as strength or structural and impact integrity go, the styrofoam breaks easily and on impact, you know, just kind of stays styrofoamy. This pottery breaks super easily, so not very structural, but this metal candle holder, we can't misshape it or get it to break when we throw it into a container. The plastic doesn't stay very structurally sound. We can mold it pretty easily, but on impact, it retains its pretty good shape. Whereas this copper is, you know, pretty soft. And when we throw it in here, it gets dinged up pretty good. So finally, this glass is hard to bend and break, but if we very lightly drop it, it shatters. And so again, as a general rule, metals tend to have a higher strength and non-metals tend to not be as structural. Corrosion weakens substances to less useful forms. With metals, it tends to happen with acids and water, and non-metals, it tends to happen with alkaline substances, water, or UV light. Here we can see the side of a vehicle has been corroded over time um, to a less useful state because of exposure to water and oxygen. As far as oxidation goes, metals can oxidize slowly with something like tarnish, or they can even oxidize rapidly, like this steel wool and non-metals tend not to oxidize as quickly. So when we're choosing a substance for an application, 
we want to keep in mind all of these properties so that we can select the right either metal or non-metal substance for whatever it is we need.